Good morning. Today is Palm Sunday. No matter who you are and where you are in life's journey, we welcome you to the First Congregational Church in Essex. Our uh, leader today will be Tony Smith, who is our preacher. And we welcome everybody, especially the young voices who are here today. We have a few that showed up, which is great, to join us. And we can start now. Thank you. Let us pray. Hosanna, save us, you who stand on the threshold while we fling the cloaks of our praise before you. Hosanna, save us, Messiah so misunderstood. Hosanna, save us, and open the gates to us of hope and prayer and peace. Amen.
Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday, and maybe the sun will stay out all day. <laughs> maybe. <coughs> Today's reading is from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Thus endeth the lesson.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There are a number of days in the Christian year when things are not what they seem. It may be that every holy day is paradoxical. Certainly this day is. Palm Sunday, also called Passion Sunday. Palm Sunday for the palms that the people placed in Jesus' path as he entered Jerusalem. Passion Sunday. Passion means suffering. Jesus' last days are at hand. It is the beginning of Holy Week, the beginning of the end. The end will be the beginning. We come to a parade where Jesus is hailed as king. And yet in the days to follow, there will be cruel betrayal, excruciating death. Ultimately, tragedy will give way to triumph. It is Passover time, and Jerusalem and the whole surrounding area is filled with pilgrims. Probably about two and a half million people have crowded the way, their way into the city. The Jewish law stated that every adult male who lived within 20 miles of the city must come for Passover and many others came as well. Passover celebrates the people's liberation from oppression. So this city is teeming with people, stirred up with religious fervor. Jesus comes into Jerusalem. Who is this? The answer depends on who and what you see. It's helpful to remember that the prophets of Israel often had a distinctive way of getting their message across. When words failed to move people, the prophets would do something dramatic as if to say, well, if you won't hear me, let me show you. Jesus is riding on a colt. He is fulfilling the prophecy from Zechariah. He is claiming to be the Messiah. But what kind of savior? Very important. In this act, Jesus says he is the humble king of peace, the servant of God. The crowds gathered by the roadside greet him as if he were a warrior king. But a warrior king would have come on a full grown horse. And the crowd spread their cloaks in front of him as people had done once before in their history. And that was when they welcomed Jehu, a commander in the Israelite army, who had come to power by means of a bloody coup. Don't they get it? They are a religious people who know their scripture. Do they misinterpret Jesus's message and claim to be Messiah? Or is this one last ditch effort to persuade him to take an easier way, to be their kind of king? Not God's servant, but their servant. Not one who reveals God's agenda, but one who will bless their agendas. Are they pleading for the kind of God that one of the characters in W.H. Auden's poem for the time being pleads for with these words. O oh God, put away justice and truth, for we cannot understand them and do not want them. Eternity would bore us dreadfully. Become our uncle, look after baby, amuse grandfather, escort madam to the opera, help Willie with his homework, introduce Muriel to a handsome naval officer, be interesting and weak like us, and we will love you as ourselves." End quote. Now, I don't think we always want that kind of God, but in our humanness, there are days we long for a God we can manage, 
a God we can use, one who will get on board for our plans, and a God who is an easygoing uncle would be a lot easier to love, at least in a sentimental way, than Yahweh, God of justice, truth, and agape love, the God of Jesus, who asks us to be agents of God's work. The one who comes in the name of God riding on a colt reveals the God of peace, of love. Had I been there, would I have welcomed him? Would I have seen his truth or hoped to change him or never understood at all? Do I see now? Who is this? Well, if I've been listening to him these past few years, I suspect my welcome will catch in my throat more like a sob than a cheer. For the world will not easily accept this God, and neither do I. As Paul the Apostle said of Jesus, for though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, and being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. And this is the mind we are to have among us. It's one thing to preach about a servant, obedient savior. It's another thing to love and follow him. The one who comes turns my values upside down, my world inside out. How can I welcome him? It is hard. Kierkegaard said Christianity has taken a giant step into the absurd. Removed from Christianity its ability to shock, it is altogether destroyed. It then becomes a tiny superficial thing capable neither of inflicting deep wounds nor of healing them. The one who comes has been saying absurd things that shock. Blessed are the meek. You have heard you shall not kill, but I say to you, anyone who is angry with another will be liable to the judgment. Love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. She who finds her life will lose it, and she who loses her life for my sake and the gospels will find it. There's a voice of protest in me. I want to answer back. Blessed are the meek. Try that on Monday morning. Love your enemies. Bless those who persecute you. Won't they have done to them what they will not do? to others. Blessed, those who are, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Well, that's fine for fanatics. Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. Maybe we too hoped for a savior who would come and take charge on our terms. But as the parade passes by, if we have eyes to see, the one who reveals the biblical God of covenant and promise is the one who is coming. He is involved in God's life-giving work, and we have seen it. He has restored sight to the blind, the literally blind and the spiritually blind. He has raised the dead, the literally dead and the spiritually dead showing to all that in God's spirit there are no limits to the joy we can experience and to the life we can bring to those who are bound. For this God makes all things new. The one who comes opens our lives to God and all life is transformed. In this not what it seems Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, there is an invitation to find a way of life that is deeper and more beautiful 
than anything the world has to offer. So what will it be for us this bittersweet week? A week in which we re-enter and take part in God's story. The story that makes sense of all our stories. Will the cross toward which he moves be the end or the beginning for him, for us? Is this God's Messiah? Who is this? Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Let us open our time of prayer in silence. <clears throat> o oh God of timelessness and time, we thank you for this time, this Sunday of paradox, of mystery, of grace. Thank you for all that is possible in this holy week, the word of forgiveness, the touch of a loved one, the conversation that means something. Thank you for family and friends, for laughter shared and for the fierce gentleness which dares to speak the truth in love and tugs us to join the long march toward peace. Hold tenderly those who grieve and struggle. For the people in Ukraine, Afghanistan, Yemen, and even here in the streets and lands streets and homes in this land. There are too many to name, gracious God, but you know who cries for your mercy and presence. Holy One, we are bold to pray for ourselves. May we who would follow your Son be aware of your presence, and may our longing for you be fulfilled so that we can share bread, be courageous in working for justice, and joy-filled in our living. Transform us, and may our lives become songs of praise ever sung for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now is the time we bring our monetary gifts and tithes to the work of love that we would do from this place. The morning offering will be taken.
gifts around us come from you, O God. You have given us life and new life in Christ. As you have given us gifts, so we offer our gifts, that we may be gifts to one another, even as Jesus so taught and lived. Amen.
May the grace of God deeper than our imagination, the strength of Christ stronger than our need, and the communion of the Holy Spirit guide and sustain us today and in all our tomorrows. Amen.